The Church of Satan has declared a total war on ignorance. Uh, this has often been misconstrued by mainstream media. It's not a uh, war of race. It is a war of the intelligent versus the stupid, of predator and prey, master and slave, domination and servitude. Um, Satan represents the powers of force in nature, and we feel that a cleansing of the idiot ideology of the pallid, incompetent Christ is uh, in order. And so uh, this is something that the Church of Satan is conducting on many different avenues. We're doing this through the use of uh, uh, what we have called aesthetic terrorism. Uh, this involves the creative use of art, uh, music, writing, uh, effectively what we call propaganda, the dissemination of information to uh, influence uh, what we call iron youth. Now it's easy and fun to think of Aleister Crowley as a great master magician, an occult superstar, and he certainly is in most circles. And I've got respect for the man as a master of his own destiny. But I've got a better name for you. One of, <clears throat> one of the fathers of modern lesser magic would be Edward Bernays. Has anybody heard of Edward Bernays? <laughs> of course you do. Ah, yes. Um, he is a man that introduced his most famous uncle, Freud, to uh, America. And he set about to implement a scientific study of the manipulation of people. He was influenced by Gustave Le Bon, Walter Lippmann, and other thinkers. And he published a book in 1928 titled Propaganda. It begins, The conscious and intelligent manipulation of the organized habits and opinions of the masses is an important element in a democratic society. Those who manipulate this unseen mechanism of society constitute an invisible government, which is the true ruling power of our country. We are governed, our minds are molded, our tastes formed, our ideas suggested largely by men we have never heard of. This is a logical result of the way in which our democratic society is organized. Vast numbers of human beings must cooperate in this manner if they are to live together as a smoothly functioning society. Our invisible governors are, in many cases, unaware of the identity of their fellow members in this inner cabinet. They govern us by their qualities of natural leadership, their ability to supply needed ideas, and by their key position in the social structure. Whatever attitude one chooses to take towards this condition, it remains a fact that in almost every act of our daily lives, whether in the sphere of politics or business, in our social conduct or our ethical thinking, there we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons, a trifling fraction of our 120 million, who understand the mental processes and social patterns of the masses. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind, who harness old social forces and contrive new ways to bind and guide the world. Now in this book, he lays the groundwork for the field of public relations, or what he referred to as the new propaganda. It is a sector so important now that major figures in business, government, fashion, and entertainment, and, that the, and all these powerful men and women are often afraid to make a single move without consulting one of these black magicians to decipher what the bones say about public opinion and how to manipulate it to their own advantage. There are charlatans aplenty in the field, but it is a dark science that is accepted as par for the course and even expected. For all of the crackpot conspiracy theories that you may hear from tin hat UFO abductees, hollow earthers, or New World Order aficionados, Edward Bernays was a man who proudly trumpeted the false flag operation as an effective business strategy. One of the most fascinating uh, fringe forums of lesser magic is the burgeoning pickup artists community or game, according to the new vernacular. 
This is a subculture that has seemingly pushed all consideration of social norms aside to focus on creating a system of seduction techniques based on empirical testing. Though the claims made by these, those in the neuro-linguistic programming camp are dubious at best, there is probably much good and pragmatic amateur science going on, if not the most rigorous. But Anton LaVey was way ahead of this trend when he published his own book on lesser magic, and he sided with the other sex. Originally titled The Complete Witch, subtitled What to Do When Virtue Fails, and later republished as The Satanic Witch, LaVey distilled all his own theories of human nature into a guidebook for women to manipulate men to their own gain. Now, there is no coy euphemism or sanctimony, as, as you probably would expect at this point. With chapters titled, Looks Mean Everything, Bitchcraft, and subsections named, You Don't Have to Be Ugly, How and When to Lie, and Learn to Be Stupid, it's going to strike the average reader, and especially the sanctimonious type, as sexist, discriminatory, prurient, and morally bankrupt of a book. It is, but in the words of Spinal Tap, what's so bad about being sexy? <laughs> you don't read a book called The Satanic Witch because you want equality. You read it because you want to have control, even if you're pretending to be equal. In The Complete Witch, he introduces what is called the law of the forbidden. It is simple. Nothing is so fascinating as that which is not meant to be seen. <laughs> 